We're going to take a quick look at the vCenter server appliance install because it's a little different in 6.0. For one thing, if you go to download the OVA because you're used to importing the OVA with uh, vSphere client, uh, there is no OVA. And there's actually a KB article about it. Unable to find the OVA, OVF, ZIP, or VMDK and uh, I'll have this URL in the comments but essentially all there is now is an ISO and the install is a little different from this ISO there's just a couple steps you have to keep in mind so here's the ISO we have the ISO mounted and if you start the setup file it'll complain because you don't have the client integration plugin installed so that has to be done first and the client integration plugin is under this VCA folder we run that install okay we're gonna walk through a quick install of the VCSA vCenter server appliance setup it's only available as an ISO now you cannot get an OVA install of it and before you do the install, you have to install the client integration plugin, otherwise, your browser will throw an error. So, what we've done with the ISO is we've mounted it as a drive here. We've already run the client integration plugin, and now we go back to the root of our CD and we run the VCSA setup to kick off the server appliance install. On this page we just click install. We accept the terms of the EULA and we're going to install this on a existing host that we have up running already and then once this is running on the host we log into the VCSA and use that to start building out our VMware environment and we actually have vSphere client logged into this same host right now and you can see there are no virtual machines on it and when this is done you'll see this appliance sitting out there as a virtual machine this is a good sign we're getting the certificate warning Now it's asking for a name and a password. This is just for the appliance itself. We're going to install everything on one device here. This is just for a lab. So a lot of these other features we're not going to use right now. We're going to create a new single sign-on domain. We're going to pick Tiny here. I only have enough hardware to run about 50 VMs on my lab, so that should work. This is just the local store data store on the host, and after we get this up and running, we can move it to any attached storage that we want to.
it's telling me I'm using an evaluation license. We're going to use the embedded database because once again this is just for a lab so it's not really that critical. Now the address, this is the address for the appliance. We're going to use 112. Now this uh, FQDN needs to be resolvable, otherwise the install will fail. So this has to be a name that you've already set up in DNS. And just to show that it's resolvable, we'll pull up NSLOOKUP here and run NSLOOKUP. So you see that we have the DNS set up already to resolve that name to that IP. So hopefully we won't get to see that error. Right now I'm going to pick uh, synchronize with host so I don't have to enter time servers right now. I'll look at that later. So now it's the last chance to look at all of our settings here. I think that's all right. And if we hit finish, then it'll start building it. And this can take a little bit of time. So we are going to hit pause here after we take a quick look. And you can already see that the machine is showing up out on the 111 host. So we're going to let this grind away and pause for a second. Okay, when the install is done, then this is the screen you get to where it shows the URL for your VCSA and the login credentials that you should be using. And that's about the end of it. Then you log into that VCSA to set up the rest of your VM environment.